Assalamu alaikum. This podcast is brought to you by Seekers Guidance, the global Islamic seminary. Help us spread the light of prophetic guidance to millions around the world by becoming a monthly supporter. Make a small donation at seekersguidance.org slash donate. As little as $10 a month can help people find life-changing guidance. So the question is, how to handle doubts and thoughts about faith? So how does one handle questions and doubts that one has about faith? The, the first thing to know is that the kinds of inspirations that come to us, these are called the khawatir, is, are of various types. The thoughts that occur to us are of various types. So a believer should know what kinds of thoughts occur to one. They're thoughts that are related to meanings of faith that Allah puts in our heart. These are called khawatir rabbaniya, lordly thoughts. And they don't require explanation. They're light that shines upon the heart. Right? You're sitting, you see a stoplight, and you realize for no reason that, wow, Allah is my Lord. What do I do? You know, and so those are clear as day. The second type of thought that comes to one is a thought towards the good, to, towards something virtuous. And these are called khawatir. Malakiya, angelic thoughts. They inspire within us thoughts to do good. And these are embraced. This, the third type of thought are thoughts that are related to our desires, our appetites. I want. And these are khawatir nafsiya. Thoughts that arise from our lower self, our nafs. And there's a diplomacy regarding those. And the fourth is we have khawatir, shaitaniya, satanic thoughts. And the purpose of satanic thoughts is to cause, is to misguide us. It's to take us away from faith and to take us away from practice. And sometimes the shaitan does this directly and sometimes the shaitan does it indirectly. Sometimes it could be immediate and sometimes it could be gradual. So you could summarize the workings of the shaitan conceptually as four things. Right? The, purpo the purpose is one, is to misguide you. Whether with respect to your faith or whether it be with respect to your practice. And in both, it could be direct or indirect, immediate or gradual. Or, right? So it's actually eight possibilities if you map it out. Right? But the purpose of the shaitan is to misguide. How can one tell these thoughts apart? You judge a thought by its consequences. You judge a thought by its consequences. How do you know? Because sometimes something may look like a call to do good, but it is actually waswasa from the shaitan. Because if the shaitan can't beat you, he'll try to cause you to be excessive. So you decide to start praying your sunnah. So he says, well, if you're going to pray your sunnah, might as well pray all of them. And the shaitan know, you know, reminds you of all the things that you knew but never thought of doing. So, oh, but there's also Salat al-Duha and there's Salat al-Awabin. What kind of loser are you? You pray your sunnah, but you don't do Awabin. Shame on you. So you, he piles it on. But what's the purpose behind it? To cause you to leave that. Even the two rakahs that you wanted to start doing. So you look at the consequences of the thought. Okay? Now, when we have doubts about the, the, the doubts that come to faith, the Prophet ﷺ told us to say, Amen to Billah, I believe in Allah. Don't entertain the doubts. You know you believe. And you don't spend your time battling with the thoughts. Imam Bu Hanifa gave a beautiful principle related to this, which is that any time one has any doubt or confusion regarding a matter related to one's iman, to one's faith, immediately one 
declares to oneself that I accept what is true with Allah. And then immediately one takes the means to address the doubt or the confusion. And how does one address doubt, with con- doubt or confusion? With the light of knowledge. With the light of knowledge. And the guiding principle in the Qur'an when it comes to seeking knowledge, and this is a principle that even many people who ascribe themselves to knowledge, they're students of knowledge, they hang around with ulama, etc., but they don't practice this at the most critical junctures, when they have a confusion, when they have a doubt, when they have a critical decision, is they don't consult. Whereas Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us, فَاسْأَلُوا أَهْلَ الذِّكْرِ إِن كُنْتُمْ لَا تَعْلَمُونَ Ask the people of remembrance if you know not. Ask the people of remembrance if you know not. So if you have doubts about your faith, immediately affirm, know that this is from the shaitan. Number two, immediately affirm, I, I accept what is true. And then you seek knowledge of that truth. If you have the, you know, books and resources, you may delve in them. But the most direct way is to connect with people of knowledge to seek clarity. Right? And this is the divine command. And it's also what the Prophet ﷺ said, إِنَّمَا شِفَاءُ الْعَيِّ السؤال. The only cure for confusion is to ask. Thank you for listening. This podcast was brought to you by Seekers Guidance, the global Islamic seminary. Visit seekersguidance.org to access reliable Islamic knowledge taught by qualified teachers. We offer a wide range of courses, podcasts, articles, and a world-class answer service. Support us in spreading free, reliable Islamic knowledge to millions around the world by becoming a monthly supporter. Visit seekersguidance.org donate and make a small monthly commitment today.